Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Last week, we were talking about coherent forms and coherent energy. You know, like the insubstantial and substantial of the uh, of coherence. Uh, the forms would be the substantial ones. That is what we can, you know, we can sink our teeth into. What what is actually uh, take shape is is it has some solidity to it. It has some some uh, permanence. And then we have the energy, which is that which animates the coherent structures. And so uh, tying this in with something we talked about a few weeks ago, that is that everything, you know, we're, yeah, we're talking about exactly. that, actually what that, uh, You want to go on mute there? Hey, I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. Great. Okay. So the, uh, we, uh, so the, tying into something we were talking about a few weeks ago, that is the everything we're doing in, in say in Tai Chi is is we're moving toward one chi and that all the parts are moving together as one. And think about what we we're talking about last week, that, that that is actually a a process, but it's one that is constantly being uh, re uh, uh, created and destroyed. That is, we we create a form and then we destroy it. And that that the non coherence is as important as the coherence. The one we focus on was going. Yeah, okay, we want to get together. We get all the pieces together into this form, and we want to get the energy so it's one chi, and then. Once we do that, we destroy it. That is, we let it go and we move on to the next form. So being conscious of this process, that is that of creating and destroying, that is of bringing something together and letting it go is essential to, to our practice. And the more we can do that and actually see that in our lives, the, it allows us to become much more uh, an active participant in, in our life and in our Kung Fu. So whenever we start to create a, uh, a structure, we, it starts off in a state of non-coherence, that it is not yet cohered, it has not yet come together, and it moves in that direction where we can, it can find its optimal expression in the moment in the body when we say oh that that's that thing and then we say okay now what we, we let go of that particular form because it's just going to get in the way if we go on to the next form we have to dissolve it and move on to the next one but ordinarily we're so focused on what's the next move what's the next move what's the next move that we don't even have an awareness of letting go of what it is we we already had and that can actually get in the way that can kind of create kinks in the hose because you're still hanging on to pieces that you put into place and you haven't really ah, emptied out so the uh, you know I had a thought that uh, like a coherent form say uh, uh, like the perfect symbol of a coherent form would be a freshly laid egg. It's, it, that is as perfect as that egg is going to be is right in that moment there. And, and it has come from non-coherence. It has been assembled and comes out. And then it's either going to go in the direction of creating another animal, be it a chicken or a duck or a platypus and or it's going to go in the direction of being consumed by some other creature like us or some animal so it it will then move into non-coherence and that's the next phase of its existence is in that is in that state that dissolving toward toward emptiness and the same thing happens in our, our taiji form we 
we make a movement and say, oh, okay, this is it. And there's the, there is the optimum expression of that form. We have an awareness of that and then ah, we let it go. And that letting go part is just as important as the uh, as the creation, even though it doesn't get quite the uh, attention usually that the creation does. So when we're practicing, we're going to be doing some stuff with that. We're going to be working on uh, assembling these forms and all the bits and pieces that go into that movement. So and we're creating, like say, if we want to create a whole body, the whole body moves as one. How do we do that? You know, there's, we have a shorthand language and I use it all the time, you know, I'll say, okay, you know, feel your fingernails and, and reach from your wrist. And it's a shorthand way of, of describing what the process is involved. But it ignores all the other little pieces that are going into it, which is which is fine. We don't want to have to think about all the little bits and pieces each time we move. We kind of get get locked into uh, immobility that way. But in a meditation like we do in this class, we get to slow things way down and connect the dots internally. And doing so, we get to see where the host gets kinked, where there are voids in the system, where things are not just not linking up the way they uh, they are, uh, are supposed to. So we slow it, we accelerate our progress in terms of our Kung Fu by slowing down. We slow down so that we can actually uh, feel into these things and really start to to connect the dots. And in so doing, we start to notice things that that we kind of glossed over whenever we're in a hurry to get to some place, in a hurry to learn that next move, that next that next action, that next form, that next you know style, whatever. We going back and actually slowing things down and really focusing on those internal connections then allows us uh, actually accelerates the progress or accelerates our learning uh, ability in other things because by bringing awareness to those pre-conscious actions, we access our superconscious and we create new connections in the whole body mind that allow us to be able to do other stuff which you know we haven't even practiced yet so that we kind of we can move on move forward on that so um let's um let's uh, stand up and we'll, we'll we'll do a little stuff here to uh and uh, I'll talk to you while we're while we're standing. Let's begin by getting our three pillars set. This begins our process of of connecting the dots in the most fundamental way. You feel the balls of your feet. Allow your weight to settle to favor that. Orient your, your posture, your structure to the balls of your feet. That becomes your, your pivot point, your center point. Weight is spread throughout the whole foot, but the balls of the feet are, are getting the attention right now. What this does is it creates a, a filling, a young, expansive filling of energy.
Knees are unlocked. Feel yourself sinking down into your feet. So that requires, you can help us along by kind of pushing away from the earth and then ah, settling down in. Reach for the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Tuck in your chin. And feel those poles in opposition. Feel your awareness extending down through your feet. Simultaneously reaching up through the crown, up into the heavens. Open the jade pillow gate allows the spirit of vitality, the jing chen, to express itself in your body mind. With each breath, find yourself getting a little more spoon, releasing into your structure, reaching down into your structure, allowing your body to just kind of Settle in to your habitual pushing away from the earth. You're letting go of that and replacing it by relaxing into the intrinsic structure of your body. Reaching with the crown of the head. Open to the yang chi of the heavens. Feeling the balls of your feet sinking into your feet it opens up the yin chi of the earth. Just plugging into the big chi. Relax your lower back. You drop your sacrum. Sink into your heels, still maintaining your central equilibrium. This time we're cultivating the yin chi. Feel that sinking. Instead of the energy coming up and out, you're feeling it more going down and in. We're still working with the one chi. It just, we've moved in, it changed the direction of its flow. Get back into the balls of your feet and feel, feel that expansiveness returning. That sense of readiness, of preparation, you're energizing. We're putting something there. We're creating a form. We're creating coherent energy. Now sink into your heels. And relax. Feel yourself. Feel the energy moving the other direction. Away from the earth and then uh, sink down, spiral down to the left, turn to the right. You're releasing the qua. So you're getting very soon qua, opening up the hip joints and permitting the energy to move freely between your legs and your torso. Reach with your elbows and open up your shoulder joints. 
Arms are slightly rounded. Point of your index fingers, feel those. You can wiggle them a little bit to feel the energetic coherence that comes from reaching and feeling into your fingers. Doing this allows us to really tap into that one chi. Energy becomes very integrated, coherent. It also signals the connective tissue system about the unity and integration of your body mind. Everything is working together very nicely. In the balls of your feet. Feel that energized. Think of your heels. Feel the relaxation there. Settling in. Now feel into your coccyx, your tailbone. Very Gently, almost imperceptibly, want to move your coccyx. Imagine you've got a big tail there. We were talking about a dragon tail, so let's have that. Let's have a dragon's tail there. And you're wagging that tail back and forth, but almost imperceptibly. Just feel into what that does to your energy as you do that. And that tail plugs into your spine. So as you move that tail, your spine moves as well. Feel into your fingertips. Imagine you've got claws there. Just feel those claws. So our imagination allows us to, to initiate the process, but it goes beyond just a, an abstract image. It goes into something you actually feel in your body because we're activating energy centers by doing this. Those fingernails, feeling those, you're, you're activating all the meridians that are in your, uh, the, are, are connected to the, uh, the fingertips. When you wag your tail, you're amplifying the chi in your governing vessel and your conception vessel, also your thrusting vessel. So these are major conduits and reservoirs for chi in the body. Think into your heels. Feel that energy settling down, dissolving, moving toward your feet, through your feet and into the earth. It's being replaced by the yin chi of the earth coming up through your feet. Bring the ball to your feet. 
Feel your center of equilibrium there. And initiate a movement by feeling yourself reaching with your wrist, moving glacially slow. We're going to be examining what's going on here as we do that. You want to feel yourself in the balls of your feet, setting your knees. Feel your hips as you do this. Your quad. Very imperceptibly wag your tail. Feel your spine. Open between your shoulder blades. So you're reaching out. Feel your scapular opening and feeding into your shoulders. Reach with your elbows and open your shoulder joints. Reach with your wrists. Feel that continuity through your arms, through your shoulders, through your scapular, your spine. Now reach with your fingers. Feel those fingernails as you reach out there, opening. Now settle into your heels. Wag your tail imperceptibly. Feel that dragon tail extending way behind you. you feel it connecting to your spine. Connecting to your governing vessel and your conception vessel, your thrusting vessel, going up into your head, up into the crown of your head. Feel those, those connections, feel those connecting all the way through your scapula, through your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, and down with your elbows and dissolve that form. Letting go. Emptying out. Feel into the emptiness. Now shift your awareness and notice that you've created a different form. Feel into that form now. Letting go of the other form. Letting go of all the forms that are to be. Just feel into this one. Feel into the perfection of this particular form. Feel the one chi animating this form. Stick into the balls of your feet, set your knees. Meet your hips, your spine, your scapula. 
shoulder, elbow, wrist, finger. So even when I say reach with your wrist, all those things are happening. Very slowly, deliberately raising, reaching with the wrist, pulling your arms into position. Reach with the fingers. Take it to your left, the ball of your left foot, set your left knee. Feel your claw, your left claw. Think into that. And wag your tail to the right as you reach forward with your right arm. But as you're doing that, also notice your spine. Turning with your tail, your shoulder, your, your scapula, your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, your fingers. Feel into that form that you created there. Feel the energy that's circulating through the whole system. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Spiral down to the right. You do that. Wag your tail to the left. And you're fine. Connecting up with your tail, your scapula. Shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, fingernails. Feel all those connecting up. Feel the feel into the form that you've just created. One of the characteristics of Daiji. That I think is unique is that it is based on reaching. Everything is reaching in Taiji. We're opening, expanding, but we're activating the connective tissue system by this reaching. We're creating these pathways for the energy to move by reaching. And then we dissolve it. We sink left ball at the left knee. We're going to dissolve that form. Back to, move back to a neutral, a neutral form. By letting go of that. And your heels, down your elbows, your wrists. See yourself dissolving that form. Going from the young expansion, begin, begin dissolution, and then lead us to another form.
Now we're going to go to a bow stance. Let's take the right foot forward. I'm going to translate this into a sort of a generic rollback form. We want to we're thinking more about how we get there rather than what our final product is. Just take this opportunity to really examine into the the internal workings that permit us to get the maximum benefit from a simple rollback form. So we start with a ward off, bring your right arm in front of you, curved in front of your chest, and your left hand faces that. Sort of a just a very common kind of ward off right hand. And I'm going to feel the ball of your right foot, which is, you got most of your weight in your right foot right now. You're going to feel the ball of that. You're going to set the right knee. And wag your tail to the left. As you do that, you're going to be turning. Your spine is going to be turning just very slowly. Your spine turns to, as, as your arms go to the right, you're reaching out. You feel your spine, feel your scapula opening up. Feel your shoulders. Reach with your elbows and open your shoulder joints. Reach with your wrists. Reach with your fingers. Feel into that structure, that form. It's very dynamic, it's very open right now. And then we're going to feel the ball of the left foot at the left knee. And as we sink into that left leg, we wag the tail to the left. And the arms relax. Reach with the crown of your head. Feel your fingernails. And wag your tail to the right, and as that turns your body. To the left, very slowly, feel your hips, feel your spine, the scapula, your shoulders, your elbows, the wrists, your fingers, your fingernails. Feel into that shape that you've just created. Now relax, feel the ball, feel the heel of the left leg you sink in, spiral down to the left, and you let that shape go. And reach with your wrist, your fingers, open the shoulder joints, reach to the elbows, feel between your shoulder blades. Feel the ball of the right foot, and push the right knee forward and set that. Feel into that. Sink into your quad. You're sinking down to the left as you do that. And now wag your tail to the left as you turn. Feel your spine, your shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, fingernails. Feel into that structure, created a new one. 
And we're going to let this one go and get the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, reach, open, feel all those connections. Drag your tail to the right. Sink into your left leg. Turn. Wagging out to the right. Feel those connections. Feel the tip of your tail. And connect that up with your fingernails. Okay. Feel the ball of your left foot. Set your left knee. Dissolve that structure. Let's sink. Take your left claw. Reach with your wrists. Open your shoulder blades. Your shoulders, your elbows. Reach with the fingers. Let's feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Spiral down to the left. And turn. Wag your tail to the left as you do this. And feel that connection. Feel the body moving as one. Feel the one chi. And let that go. Turn. Step back. You stick at the heels, dissolve that structure. Feel the motion in stillness. So all the activity is going on in your body while you're not moving it. Allow that energy to circulate and do what it needs to do. Now to heal what needs healing. Dissolving the kinks in the hose, filling in the gaps. You've created a structure that allows that to occur. It enhances that healing, the healing powers of the chi. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and step in. Think into your heels. Feel your central equilibrium. Turn to the balls of your feet and take a deep breath and come up. Feel the connections throughout your body as you step opening, 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 expanding very young and now dissolve that. Throw that form away and dissolve. Letting go, moving into the emptiness. Your attention is going on to the emptiness. We're feeling into the wave rather than the particle ring. Take this opportunity to 
Allow the emptiness to carry you. Please have a seat. I tried to keep it real simple in terms of what we're doing so we can really just focus on all those internal connections. I hope that that came across. How'd we do? <laughs> you unmute people is that uh, they I guess they unmute themselves, right? Dennis. Yeah, well, the few months I've been away, I've certainly missed a lot. <laughs> I, uh, it was, it's good to be back. It was really powerful meditation there. Um, so I don't want to take up much of the class's time, but what's new is this heel, heel business. Can you kind of just give me the 10 cent primer on it? Yes. Look, uh, well, I think that's, that's, that's a good question there, Dennis. I think uh, a lot of people would like to hear about that because it, you know, for years I've been emphasizing the balls of the feet. Yeah. And yeah. the primary reason for that is that most people are, have a collapsed energy field. Most people I've encountered in my life have a collapsed energy field. That is their, their energy is not expansive. It's not, up and out, it's it more down and in. There's, there's, and so as a remedial activity, I said, let's pump everybody up so they can feel what it's like to have a balloon that's got got air in it, so they can get a sense of what that what that feels like to uh, to 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 be in an expanded expansive state, and mm. so that so that means the energy. Um, you want to get that yang chi pumping it up, and the balls of the feet did just that. It allows us to to really you're 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 cranking up the chi and you're getting ready to go. You're active, but there is once people have that that idea, once people can do that, and they can feel what it's like to oh, I, this is what it feels like to be full of energy. Now what? we can go to the inside. And when you have that much chi, then you can notice that yin chi is not just no chi, it's its own flavor, mm -hmm. which is easy to, uh, to ignore, easy to miss if energy to you is just bright lights and shiny objects. It, uh, that there's this, profound quality of, of the yin chi, which is relaxed and supportive and nurturing and, and it ties everything together, which is easy to ignore when the yang chi is out there doing the song and dance and, and uh, getting all sparkly. So, uh, uh, so that was the, the reason for that, that thing. I guess recently I just sort of said, hey, you know what? Now's the time to flip it around. So and uh, so, uh, um, so like when Rocky plays, fights left-handed, you know, it's uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, it it, it change, changes the game. So now we're now we're doing we're doing a little dance between the yin and the yang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about it in class. I mean, there's different schools of thought. Like there's people who say you root on the ball of your feet and there's some people that say you root better on the heel of your feet and there's like been like two schools of, of debate over it but actually what you say makes a lot of sense great well i and think you have to do both yin chi you, you don't notice it so much it's so subtle right and the other thing is if people have a hard time finding central equilibrium 
in their yeah. heels unless they first discover the insubstantial quality of central equilibrium whenever they have a big bag of young tree there. And then they can, when they, then they can, it becomes more prominent uh, with, uh, you know, when they're in their heels. Rick. I just wanted to say that if those students didn't say you and said, I work better on the heels, I work better, there would be no argument. Just a little note. Explain. In other words, he was saying when people have these discussions, he was saying they say, you would work, you know, you would work better on your heels. You would work better on your on your uh, on your balls of your feet, or I call them footballs. But my attitude is if the person thinks about how they feel rather than trying to think about how the other person feels, there wouldn't be an argument. I work better on both of them. Uh, depending on how I use them, so there's no argument. That's all. That that's that's a good point there, Rick. That that's good. And also it's something that say, you know, whenever someone says that that I I do it better, I say show me, you know, show exactly. me, show me, you know, your your root in your heels, show me your heat, root in your balls, your feet, and it gives them an opportunity to, you know, to actually get some sort of feedback. On on uh, what's going on, There's, so it becomes a uh, uh, it becomes more verifiable at that point. It's much so that's a good point. It's better it's better to teach yourself than to try to teach others. You do your thing, let them do their things, and and share what you discover rather than right. argue. Good point, Rick. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, not really uh, feeling eloquent, but uh, it was really uh, feeling the uh, the amount of feel really really getting really good feel for the one chi was really really cool. And it's funny how often that you um, will bring up what I, I've sort of been working on this during the week. But you know, not you know, certainly not to the level that you taught. But uh, it's it's just funny how <laughs> you very often go to where I'm going, and I've been doing you know really slow and, and getting a better feel for it. And this was definitely a, a big big boost. Great, good, good. I, I'm glad glad to hear that you're exploring that on your own because it's a uh, I think it's really profound and it it accelerates everything whenever. Whenever, whenever you do that, you know, and uh, uh, so that's that's terrific, great. Yeah, you know, oh, sorry, just one more thing. They, uh, you know, emphasizing the paying attention to the breaking down before going to another form was excellent. Very. Oh, very good, helpful. good. Yeah. It, it, it's it's kind of wonky, but it you know it it's a it's a thing you know, and it. Uh, just having that as an awareness, even if you never think about it again, it's like having that as an awareness is is helpful, I believe, because you realize that there's no, no, this is we are creating and destroying all the time. So let's, uh, you know, let's let's take responsibility for our our creations and our destructions, and uh, realize that it's both a part part of the game. I, by the near the end there, I was beginning to feel like the liquid mercury guy in Terminator Two. <laughs> Just... uh, yes. <laughs> uh, cool. Jonathan. So that tail, you know, it's it's really interesting. You can really move a lot with that, and the difference if you. If you're shaking even, you know, in a small way, but a lot, shaking without the tail shakes up the system, but put the tail in and the, you're traveling with the system. It's such a completely different experience, even though externally it looks like the same thing. Play that one more, please. Again? Say, say, explain that a little more. Well, I'm saying, it, it, you know, just right now, you see, you're saying you just shake, even if it's not like, you know, but no matter what, if you shake without a tail, 
you feel like you're shaking up your whole system. You're like, oh, you're really putting a kind of chaos into it or just, you know, just shaking it up. Tail in, no matter how fast you work, it's different. You're like, you're traveling with the system. You're, you're, okay. You're still a whole that's moving. You're a whole that's moving fast rather than the whole being, you know, being discombobulated. It just the sense of the tail and the same motion takes away the discombobulation. That's that's a really good point there, Jonathan. That's it. Because it there's a unifying quality to having that that tail as part of your part of your thing. So it's uh, yeah. uh it it ties the room together. <laughs> right, exactly. And it's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> okay, so uh, um, I got nothing. I that, that, <laughs> nothing more. Nothing more to say. I think it, I think I said I left it all there. So uh, another, uh, <laughs> another new T-shirt. Another new T-shirt. I, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> You do not have nothing. You gave us plenty. <laughs> I, I was, really amazing. went to try to find some way of synopsizing all this. I said, nah, uh, I, th I, think it, <laughs> I think I think we're done at this point. Use so, the uh, usual. Just say, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Thank you all so much. <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody's in the digital pod. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Hey, guys. Love you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> Appreciate you.